Zen server can be a pretty good option. And one of the reasons for that is just the types of behaviors that go on in a desktop virtualization environment are very much different than those that go on in a, a server environment. On, on one side, you have your servers. And, and server virtualization is somewhat different from desktop virtualization in terms of how the resources end up getting used. Your servers typically, they tend to get created, and then they just tend to operate all the time. You don't tend to reboot them all that often particularly in comparison with what happens over here in your desktop virtualization world. With desktop virtualization, there tends to be more reboot activity that goes on. There's more log on activity that goes, up, goes on. There's more unpredictable activity because of how users are interacting with their virtual machines. And so because of all the resource consumption that goes on here in desktop virtualization, well, it can be a good idea to actually segregate out the two infrastructures so that the behaviors on one side don't end up consuming resources that would be otherwise better used over on this side. For that reason, just and really for that reason alone, Zen Server might be a good hypervisor for desktop virtualization as it, it just if even just to separate out the infrastructure from what you might have over here with Hyper-V or VMware. Now, there's nothing to say that you can't use the same hypervisor across the board, and that's, there's an argument that that's probably a good idea. But again, separating out the resources, isolating them from each other, can be an, a smart idea from just merely a performance standpoint. So something to think about here as you're thinking about implementing your Zen server environment in production. In this nugget, we're going to spend just a very introductory or take a very introductory look at the ways in which you get a Zen server infrastructure up and online. Just the very basics here so that you have that core knowledge to get yourself up and running should you intend on using Zen server. Uh, here in this nugget, we're actually going to install and configure a Zen server server. We're going to plug it into our Zen Center application so that we can manage it from that Zen Center console. We will configure a couple of different storage repositories as well, or SRs, as you'll see in the infrastructure. We have uh, two storage repositories that we're going to deal with. One will be a shared storage repository. The other will be a SIFS storage repository for the storage of ISO files. And in fact, as an interesting side note, so if you've played with Hyper-V and VMware and you've dealt with some of the, I don't know, the, the intricacies of getting your virtual machines connected up into their DVD ISOs, both VMware and Hyper-V have just those extra couple of steps that make dealing with ISOs a a little bit of a pain in the neck. And one of the things that I really dig about Zen Server in comparison with the other two hypervisors is how you can connect up to these SIFS shares for uh, uh, connecting your virtual machines to their DVD ISO files. It, remarkably simple, elegant in fact. You literally can connect it up to an existing SIFS share and your virtual machines can access DVD ISOs that are in that share. I, it, I'm floored at how simple this is in comparison with how not simple it is with the other two hypervisors. With those storage repositories created, we will then configure a resource pool and turn on high availability. Another side note here is just this notion of high availability. In a server virtualization world, high availability is, at least these days, becoming almost a requirement. You know, uh, if I build a server and something goes wrong with my hypervisor host, well, then I want that server to reboot somewhere else, or I want to be able to load balance it somewhere else. In the desktop virtualization world, high availability is not always an absolute requirement. Rather, high availability is something that you'll need to consider as part of your design strategy. Implementing high availability can require things like shared storage, and shared storage just adds a bit of complexity to the whole decision-making process and to the whole, really, the whole design of your environment. Well, when you're making these decisions, in a desktop virtualization world, it is entirely feasible for you to configure your desktops atop individual servers and local storage. Doing so may end up, again, with all the technologies we've talked about here, provisioning services and machine creation services, can actually be a simpler solution. And as we all know in the IT world, things that are simple are sometimes better. <laughs>